Hi, my name is Anna Rut. I'm a project manager here at Iceland Music. And one of my projects here is the Music Fund. So I administer the Music Fund on behalf of the on behalf of Iceland Music. And uh, the Music Fund falls under the Ministry of Culture and Business Affairs. Uh, Iceland Music is administrating it on their behalf. Uh, I'm a project manager and what I do is that I'm the contact person between the ministry, between the, for the applicants and also with Rannis who are in charge of the application portal that we use for the applications. And we are a neutral partner, so to speak. And I also sit the meetings with the grant committees where they go over the application just to make sure that everything is up on board. And that's, yeah, so that's my role here. And that's the role of the Iceland Music in this regard. And I just wanted to come here to uh, tell you, please, if you have any question about the music fund, please send an email to styrkir at icelandmusic.is. Uh, styrkir, that means grants. It's S-T-Y-R-K-I-R at icelandmusic.is. Because... Uh, we want to see lots of applications, but we want to see the right kind of applications. So if you have any questions or you're unsure about anything, it's, it's always better to reach out before you send in an application. And I want to welcome here experts in the field of application writing, uh, Edda Konrasdóttir and Karitas Hardadóttir from Iceland Innovation Week. So they have a lot of experience working with uh, artists, startups, all kinds of businesses. In this regard, on a great with consulting and uh, yeah, giving you all the expertise on how to write a great application. So, yep, I just want to welcome them here and say thank you. Amazing. Thank you, Anna. And lovely to see all of you here today. And welcome everyone on the stream. I don't know if they see me or where or how, but yeah, so my name is At. Uh, I'm the founder and CEO of a concept called Iceland Innovation Week, which is an uh, innovation startups tech festival happening in Iceland uh, every year in May. Um, a little bit about me and why I am here, going to be talking about grant applications. Um, I've been for the past decade working within the Icelandic innovation ecosystem with startups, writing grant, grant applications. Um, fundraising from investors. Um, yeah, basically, I've been working in in all aspects of of like startup ecosystem. Um, and then my hi, <laughs> and then my passion is actually um, taking that experience and taking it into the world of arts and and creators. So. Uh, I've been teaching a seminar in the University of the Arts, for example, on the artist as an entrepreneur and if it's a taboo to be an artist and actually make money or get grants uh, if you're a sellout then or stuff like this. So this is actually like completely my passion to kind of be in between those two worlds. Um, and there's a lot of things that I'm going to be going through today, uh, like a lot of businessy things that I feel like should be normalized to more people um, and especially to artists and people with the music within the music industry and that's what we're going to be focusing on here today um, grant applications are I think I probably have the black belt in those by now um, I've gotten a, a, a few tens of millions, almost hundreds of millions of grants throughout the years, whether it's for startups, for projects from Icelandic funds or e Europe, European funds. So, so I'm pretty, I've, I've gone through many of them and I've also read over a lot of applications. So, so I have a lot of opinions <laughs> on this. Um, and then I also want to say that I am in no way connected to like reading over applications from the music fund. Um, so I'm just here as, as an expert on grant applications in general. And uh, whether it's for the music fund, or for any other application form, 
then I want you to walk out here with like some tools in your toolbox to be able to tackle these grants. Okay, um, so I'm gonna go over key elements that a good grant application should include, what should be kept in mind and what you should kind of try to avoid. Um, and then just some useful methods to write a grant application because I know it's always, the hardest part is usually just to start and where to start and can be a little bit overwhelming. Um, so um, to begin with all applications, grant application, usually have the same elements that you have to tap into. Um, and for example, the music fund has has these elements, all kinds of other grants, whether it's ranging from, you know, list them on a loan at the runnies or just whatever it is. If EU grants in general, you always you're always going to need to describe the project or business that you're applying for. Um, you're always going to have to put forward some sort of a plan of what you're doing, when and in what timeline. Um, you always have to talk a little bit about yourself, you, if it's one person or a team and the experience, um, then like some unique aspects or the value that you're creating that's specific um, and unique about yourself. Um, then there's usually a marketing or a promotional plan which connects to the, the plan and the timeline. And then there's the budget and the funding, which is usually a a tough part to tackle for a lot of people um, and is a personal favorite of mine. <laughs> and then attachments also, which can all, always be like something that you think about last because it's usually what the application form is lastly asking for. Um, but it's a thing where you can actually like, it's a great tool to kind of stand out and show your unique proposition. Okay. Um, so criteria, I'm just going to go through a few points of recommendation. So usually there is some sort of criteria, whether it's the music fund that we're going to be talking about here today or any other fund, there's always going to be a criteria on some website of what you, they are looking for. Um, what I personally do, yes. The slides, yes. So there's a question, just going to repeat it for the mic. There's a question if you're going to get the slides after the seminar. And yes, you can get the slides. Yes. Um, so a thing that I myself usually do, I copy paste the criteria and everything that is asked for. And I put it into uh, like a Google Drive Word document, not in a Word document, because that can get lost if you lose your computer. So everything online. Um, and then I try to like strategically check all those boxes because there's usually some things in there that aren't specifically asked for in the formats. Um, so that, that can also always be like an angle to kind of stand out. Um, and then the toughest part is to start. Um, usually people start when applications, when the form opens for applications. Personally, I like being prepped for this all year. So for example, in, in our company, Iceland Innovation Week, we apply for a lot of grants. So we usually just have these texts on like inventory <coughs> on our Google Drive. We have a text about our team. We have a text about our, or the project we would be uh, applying for. Because I said earlier, like, they're usually asking for the same things. So we are just constantly prepping these because there's always going to be a new deadline and a new grant. So instead of like starting on square one, when you open up a grant application and you like well, sit down and you're like, okay, here we go. Um, instead, you would just start copy pasting a lot of stuff in the application and then you're already getting somewhere. And then there's this like big fear of like starting then that's usually out the window. Um, so I recommend, and if you don't have this text uh, already, then I would always say just start writing some thoughts, like brain dumping stuff in there without thinking too much about that being the final text or what the final thing is. Just, you know, when you're in the flow, just 
wrote down some little stuff in each chapter so you're you've at, at least started um and then there's the time i would always say give yourself plenty of time to write the application because this tends to take more time than you usually plan for um and what I always do is I set a deadline in my own calendar, always a week before the deadline. And I set that as my personal deadline because there's all, then I have a week if something comes up or if I have to change something or if I want someone to read it over for me. So like I personally reprogram my brain that the actual deadline is a week before it is. So, uh, so that I have that little, you know, have a week to kind of, change some things and then, you know, worst case, I will hand it in before anyone else. Um, yeah, and then, yeah, allow some time for reading over. I always recommend to get someone to read it over. It doesn't have to be an expert. It could also just be anyone uh, really who's not even an expert in the field or within the music industry, because it's usually better if it's someone that's not, because you want someone to understand what you're doing you want the average person to understand what this is about. You don't want it to be too like technical or or out there. Um, and then yeah, make make sure that you have some time if you're asking for feedback to to allow some time for you to edit uh, your application. So the, the timing part, and I know this sounds like really basic, like yes, I will make time, but this is, you know, from all the people that I've worked with, helping them. You know, I've been a business coach for for five years now for a lot of artists and this is always something that you know bites you in the ass in the last minute like oh i wish i would have made a little bit more time for this um and then a few tips and tricks before i'm going to go through the actual application form for the music fund so um the application that you hand in must show that your project is viable and what does that mean it means that if you get it's re, that's why it's really good to get someone else to read it over like does it make sense that you and this project are applying for this grant if you just like zoom out a little bit from we're all in when we're applying for a grant you're in this little bubble and there's your project and that's kind of everything it's so good to zoom out and get fresh eyes to actually say like do you think honestly this project makes sense for for this grant and and in this case, then it would be good to send an email, maybe to Anna, ask like, I'm doing this, uh, does this make sense? And then she could possibly say, well, actually you're applying for the wrong grant, but we do have another grant for this. So it's always good to ask. I know it can seem like, you know, a little out there and that they have this just form and you're supposed to go through that. But Anna here said earlier that you're, you're she would be happy to for you to reach out to her. So I really recommend doing that either way. Um, then another thing, what is special about the project, and this goes back to like your unique proposition, why you rather than someone else who would maybe have the same idea. Um, another thing that I usually mention when people are writing grant applications are not writing it in like uh, the first first person. So it's not like, I am doing this project and I'm going to do this. I would always say the project and the project manager of this project. I would be in third like, person uh, format. So it's a little bit more professional. Um, and then support your writing with sources if possible. And I'm not talking about like you're writing a master's thesis sources kind of thing, but it, it's always good if you're using some data or numbers, especially when you're talking about like the market that you are working within, or if you want to say like, hey, this project that I'm doing, it's been proven or done, you know, in, in Denmark last year, and here's a link to that. And that's why I know that this will work, something like this. It's always good to support that with some sources. Um, Visuals is another thing that I love, especially when I'm reading over grant applications. Uh, usually the first thing I go to is the attachments and to see like something visual because there are going to be humans reading over the application and humans tend to attract to visual things. I'm not saying that this is a monumental thing for you to get a grant or not. 
I'm just saying that it helps like psychologically, basically. So if if you get if you create like a nice PDF that's supporting and it you basically has the same information that you're putting in the grant application. Um, but it usually helps a lot, especially for me and people around me that have been in like these uh, committees that are reading over grants. Um, and then one other thing, this is like kind of from, from my business kind of perspective, when I'm reading over grant applications and someone says like, no one has ever done this in the world or like there's no competition, that's usually like wrong <laughs> or not right. So I would never like take that part. I would rather sell how you are the perfect person to do this or how your project is the best or, or whatever. But okay. Um, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through, I just take, took screenshots. I pretended I was applying for a grant for the music fund. Now we took some screenshots from the application form um, and I'm just going to go through it. Uh, before I do, can I see a show of hands who has actually opened the form and taken a look at it? Okay, so like roughly a half of the people in here have already. I don't know about the online ones, but um, okay. So basically the opening page looks a little bit like this. Do, do you see the screen well with the sun or because yeah. I don't see anything on it. Yeah. Okay, so it opens up and it's like this and you basically select which grant you are applying for within the music fund grant. And uh, as an example, I chose the, the business grant, the development and infrastructure department. Um, and most of these grants, they, they I mean, I'll, I'll give Anna, you know, to answer questions about this. There's a tiny bit of difference between the forms. But all in all, after having looked at them, you know, they basically look the same. There's just a few tweaks here and there. Um, so it's up there. You can see like there are under or like different pages under the application. And under the page one, there's the applicant itself. And there's just like basic information about you that you fill out and the applicant. Um, and then I would say the two like two important uh, things that you're going to be filling out is the one number two, which is the project, and number three, the costs and the funding. Um, and then there's like the documents and resources, and that's basically attachments. So in uh, page number two, there's two under pages. There's the project, and then there's a project plan. So going back to the list we went through before, basic project description, and your plan or your timeline and how you're going to execute. Um, yes, question? Sorry, are we going back to the applicant uh, page? Yeah, yeah. No, no, I mean, are or, we going back after to that? Or before we move on, I wanted to uh, ask something about Yeah, the... yeah, no, you, you can ask. Yeah, definitely. Uh, so <clears throat> I was checking it out, and there was participants and cooperation. I was kind of confused on how that that work for a musical project. Okay, can you maybe repeat the question into the record? <laughs> <laughs> Just so that people online can also hear. So in the applicant section, mm -hmm. there's participants and cooperation. Yeah. And when I was checking out the grant thing, I was a bit confused. Like, yeah. For a musical project, for example, yeah. how does that work if it's a solo project, for example, but of course I'm working with other people, I'm working with a mixer, I'm working with a producer, I'm working with uh, mm -hmm. artwork, and, you know, like visual artists and stuff, but how, where, where would those people fit in either participants or operators? Does that yeah. make sense? So I'll let Anna answer first, and then I can also add to it. Yeah, I would say it depends a bit on the context. From what you described, it sounds more like participants. Okay. But it can also be like companies or, uh, yeah, uh, different entities that can be partners in it. But from your description, that would fit more under participants in this context. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Collaborators would be more like band members, for example, if no. it's more than one people asking, uh, applying for the grant or? I think in this case, collaborators would be more if, for example, you're a company 
applying for a grant and you're working with other companies or other kind of entities okay. yeah, in this sense but it is it's not it's not black and white it's very like you know it's up for uh, interpretation mm -hmm. but from what your example i would say that would be more like uh, participants in okay. the project if it's like band mem members that are working with you mm -hmm. yeah Mm -hmm. um, and then in addition to that, of course, also in the like project description or in the attachments, you could enlist and like show like these are the people that are within the project that is mm -hmm. going to be funded. And this is the list of the people or entities that we are going to be working with. So just like also making that clear um, who is like within the team mm -hmm. of the project that the grant gets and then uh, listing up like possible or or confirmed uh, partnerships and, and stuff like this um, to kind of, yeah, just show who's in. But I think it's also good to say like we've got um, like a soft commitment for this or we're going to be approaching this project with this entity, something like this. There's always, you know, some ideas that you can come across for that. Okay, um, moving back on to the, the project page. Um, so basically there is like the basic information. You have the project title, you have this description, um, and then estimated start and end months of the specific project. If it is a project that is like shorter, there's a drop down. Um, where you can actually select if it, this is like a long-term project that's going to be for what, like two or three years, or if it's a short project that's like within some X amount of months. Yes, Anna. Yeah, just to add to that, that that's only in two categories that you can apply for long-term contract. Yeah. So that's within the business grant and the performance grant. Yeah. Oh. Uh, and the other two, you can only apply for a project grant. Mm -hmm. Good to know. Um, and then below that, there's a more detailed project description. Um, and this is basically what comes below in the project page. You have like main project type, which is a drop down, further explanation of that project type. And under this project type, because we're in the business grant, there comes up like the if this is a music festival or for a, a like a musical venue, et cetera, et cetera, like what type it falls under. And if that doesn't appear in the drop down, you can add that in the box below. Um, then there's some text about marketing promotional plan. That was on our list from earlier as well. Um, main music genre uh, and further explanation if needed. I'm just gonna run through these things and you just raise your hand if, if there's any questions. I just wanted to like go through it. So when you go into the application form, you're not seeing it completely for the first time. Um, and then basically the location, your geographical location. And then below in like under page number 2.2, .2, there's the project plan. Um, and in there, you can fill in basically the timelines of each component of the project. So, you know, it depends on what you're doing. And, and I can take an example of us planning like a, a music festival or, or a concert. And then I put in like each category. So there comes in like a pop up where you put in each category. And like I did, you know, marketing and PR is starts here and here. We're going to be booking artists. That's going to start here. That's going to end here, um, et cetera, et cetera. Like executing the actual event. Da -da -da. It's, uh, that's pretty, pretty straightforward. And uh, I'm going to go through this timeline setup also a bit later. Um, then there is to fill in the costs. And basically, like the easy way to approach that is that you take the list of from the project plan, what you're going to be doing, and you try to put a price tag on each thing to kind of start to figure out how much the project is going to cost. Um, so you select, like there's a drop down, what it is, if it's salary cost, travel cost, et cetera. Um, and, and these drop downs can vary, vary between grants, I guess. So like, don't be surprised if it's, if it's a bit different because we're just within the, the business one. It's for like festivals, et cetera. 
Um, and then we put in like, we just tested, put it in, put, put in some numbers for like salary, the facility, etc. Just so you can see how it looks when you filter it in. Um, and then if there's financing other than the requested grant, then you put that in there. Um, so now we've kind of gone through both the project part and the cost and funding part. Um, da, 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 da. This is what the pop up that comes there. And then we go into the documents that you can like attach after. So pretty, pretty straightforward and not too long of a of a application form or not, you know, it's, I would say that it's pretty clear and it's a good setup from the music fund. And I just wanted to see if there's any questions about the actual uh, application form before I move, move forward into some other tips and tricks and things. Yes, back there, wait for the mic. <laughs> wait for the album mic. Mm -hmm. We're talking about the timeline for yeah. projects and some can, you can apply for long, longer projects. Mm -hmm. in two categories so yeah. are you then specifying over more than one year or two or three is that you know what, like how does that work yeah uh, yes you do have to show uh, both the budget plan and the project plan over the same amount of years you're applying for so if you're applying for a long-term contract for two years that has to show in the application and we ask that within the application format for the budget, that that's just the first year. But then you attach uh, a longer budget for the two or three years as an attachment with the application. Mm -hmm. And for the project timeline, we ask that you show the whole amount within the format. You're so, applying for one year, but you're showing the rest in the... No, if, if you're applying for a long-term contract, you're applying for either two or three years, yeah. Mm -hmm. Can you get a grant for one year, even though it stretches out to, for three years? Like, are you risking not receiving anything if you have a longer project and you're applying for the longer grant? Do you know this? Like, yeah, I'll, I'll like, let that, yeah, I'm yes. not get that uh, because it's so specific. if you do, uh, if you apply for a long term yeah. contract yeah. and the committee doesn't think the project or the application is strong enough for a long term. Uh, contract mm -hmm. it will go with the application uh, and perhaps give you a project grant instead of a long-term grant mm -hmm. so you're not risking like that is get thrown out of the window yeah. but yeah so you you know okay yeah. okay okay then we're gonna move on uh, and we're gonna have a break after this part this part uh might be you know a little out there business plan there's no business plan that is asked for in this like grant application and usually in no grant applications you're asked for a business plan and this kind of sounds like your person in a suit with like a bag and you're going into a business meeting with your business plan but basically like these things that we went through in that application form are the components of a business plan. So, yeah, so we're gonna go through that a little bit. Um, uh, so how to create a business plan. I'm just gonna go through like what it is that you do to create that, to kind of connect these two things together. I'm not saying that you have to do a business plan. I'm just recommending that if, if you have an idea for a project or a business, or, or some idea that you're going to realize, it is really helpful to go through and to go through the business planning process. And just, you can do this in five minutes, basically in your mind to just go through the list of things to see if it's actually viable. And it can be such a good preparation to write these grant applications. Like I was talking about earlier to have like an inventory of texts and content for these applications. Um, so basically when you're creating a business plan, um, 
first thing is you nail your value proposition and value proposition is basically like a, a fancy word for what is the core of the value that you are creating or like why are you doing this what what does this do why is, does this make the world a better place even though you know you, the project itself doesn't have to make the world a better place that's pretty pretty big ask but you you know where i'm going with this like what is the value proposition of the project um and then it's like who is the customer what's your market and competition and these are all fancy business plan words for like who's going to use this why why are you doing this who's going to attend this music festival if, if that's what you're planning um what's your market like is is this going to be happening in iceland is it within a specific group of people or a genre or you know, where, what, where are we looking? What's the scope of, of the, the market that you're going into? And then competition um, is also like a, a pretty strong word for what else is happening out there that's similar to this project or has anything similar been done before? Or can you name something similar? For example, it's very popular in, in these grant applications to, to say like in the Nordics because that's so close to Iceland. Like this has been done here in, in Denmark or Sweden or, or whatever. So you can take some examples and that's what, you know, the competition part. So I'm a little bit trying to break down these components of a business plan and just show you how you can use that as a tool to write grant applications. Um, then plan what to be done and when. And that is the project timeline that we were looking at in the application. What will the project cost? How much money do you need to start and when? Um, what is the business model, which basically mean, is a fancy word for is this thing going to make any money or not? Or do you plan to make money from it? Or yeah, so that that's that question. Um, and then basically like the future and, and the vision of, of this, this thing that you're creating. So business plan sounds a little bit easier now, doesn't it? Yes. Okay. Okay. Um, yeah. Spurning. Yes. Oh, and I want to say before the question, if anyone wants to ask in Icelandic instead, that's completely fine. We are just posting this in English to be inclusive for everyone. But if you're more comfortable asking in Icelandic, I'm not going to say any other language. I don't know how I would do there, but yeah. <laughs> Okay, so the question is that with this business plan, is this basically kind of like the, are you talking about this as kind of the skeleton on how to make the application? Or do you also recommend to do a separate attachment file to put, put into the application? Like very the business plan? Yeah, very good question. And it depends. In some cases, that would make perfect sense. Um, for example, for the business grant, okay. um, if you're doing a, a project, or for example, you know, we we're, we've been taking the music festival, for example, here today. Um, yes, I would recommend it, but no one is asking for it. Like I said okay. before, like your application is not going to be worse if you don't attach a business plan. No one is asking for that. But uh, yes, it is the components of the grant application. It's basically saying the exactly same things. Um, but the main thing that I want to come across is also that it's just such a good preparation and to set your brain on a different setting and looking at your project from like other perspectives um, and applying this like business world thing on it without it being too like, you know, you're, you're not getting too businessy. You're just breaking it down and kind of seeing the application form in a, in a different view, if that makes sense. Yes. I'm, I have a follow-up question regarding, you know, uh, if it's going to make money or not, let's say that we are recording yeah. an album. Yeah. Uh, is it a requirement to kind of like estimate that we'll sell 100 records or? No, no, so there's that... no requirement of that. Uh, exactly. And then, and does it fall then? Do we need to justify that we're doing this project based on other terms than monetary terms? I'm, I'm, yeah. So very good question. Also, this also just applies to because it's a part of the business plan. It's 
not the question in grant applications. There's usually only a question of costs of how it's gonna, what it's gonna cost. Um, but when you are thinking about uh, projects that are in a like more like a business mm -hmm. setup or are for profit, then it could be helpful to actually think about this. For example, I know you know one person in here that's building a startup platform um, where you would want to ask like how is this going to make money if you want it to to scale, etc. But then it's hard to like, you know, there's so many different projects, but this is just one thought. Um, but no one's, ask, no one's asking for the business plan or asking about how it's going to make money. Usually it's just how much money do you need to, to execute this project? So, all right. Okay, moving on. Um, this slide is basically just the these classic components of a business plan. I, I broke them down a little bit on the previous slide, but I just kept this in there as well for your future reference because you're going to get the slides. Um, just if you want to go through it and, and do a little bit of uh, exercise. I am going to kick things off again, the second half. Um, so now I'm just going to start deep diving into a few of these components for example like project planning marketing pr financing etc um so project plan um i usually take this example of of planning a wedding because it's like the most basic like event planning component or concept you can take. I'm not going to go through the, the specifics in there. But, um, you know, when you're going to execute a, a project, you want to make the plan within each component because there are different components that are happening over dif different period of times. And sometimes a lot of them are happening at the exact same time. Um, but... Yeah, you want to be able to communicate this in, you know, as uh, pla like organized manner as possible. And to do that, there's there are a few ways uh, to communicate that. Um, and within grant applications, the setup for project plan is usually like the one we looked at earlier, where you fill in each component and for how long time that that component takes. Um, I am going to go through just a little bit about, about project planning for you to be able to prep. So let's say that there is not an application, you know, there's not application deadline open right now, but you still want to be prepping maybe for the next one next year or something like this. Um, how you could kind of foresee and visualize a project plan without having this application form where you can fill it in. Um, so usually, and don't let this monster Excel sheet scare you, I, usually I use a concept that's called a Gantt chart. Um, I'm not going to go into my like professory project manager role here, but I, I honestly love a good Gantt chart. And what we were creating earlier in the application form is a Gantt chart. So basically, a Gantt chart is a visual timeline of components of a project over specific uh, amount or period of time. Now, I'm not sure how well everyone in here can see this, but basically up top, we have a timeline, whether it's by days, weeks, months, year, that differs from the type of project. And then on the list, we kind of list out, list, list up, um, each project component. Um, and we have like uh, the, what do you say, like uh, categories and under categories under each one. Um, so personally, I, I use this setup when I am doing a project plan, um, but there are a lot of nice like online tools where you can also fill them in, whether it's like project management tools that are for free online, like, um, Trello or uh, Asana, um, Miro, 
and stuff like this. Anyone, have you heard about these uh, things? Yeah. So I love using these kind of tools to kind of map out uh, project plans. And because we had this wedding chart, I have this screenshot also, but it's in Icelandic. So I'll just let it slide with the slides in there. So you can see how you can kind of break down these components to prep for a grant application or just to prep a plan for your project. Um, and then I start by filling in like what has to be done and how long of a time each component takes and what deadline is for each component. So this is like, it's a pretty straightforward thing to plan for, but it's just so nice to map it out on your own before you start like raw filling it in an application just for you to kind of start visualizing it before you like go filling it in. And I have a question. Yes, here. Uh, about the project plan, how yeah. granular should we be? So should we, for example, I see uh, something that takes two days. Yeah. We would pretty much feel, you know. Exactly. Yeah. So uh, how... Very good question. And this plan was just uh, that I have up there. This is just like to, to uh, get you start brainstorming. I wouldn't go as granular as that, but it... But it depends, like in the earlier screenshots from the application form there, I put in like some basic things that you would put in these types of things. Um, but for example, when, you know, if you, because I know that you have a software solution and so like tech, no, technological development where, where it would be like um, programming front end, back end, da, 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 et cetera, design. I, I wouldn't specify like which component, like today I'm going to be doing this button of my software, you know. Uh, but if we would put it onto like planning a music festival or whatever, which was the, uh, the uh, ex uh, example that I was taking earlier, then I would put down the things that I put in earlier, like the planning of this, booking artists, executing the event. Da -da -da. I think this is something that it's hard for me to say overall for everyone how granular you would be in these things. But I think it's also nice for yourself. It's also a matter of like, are you doing this as a to-do list and a plan for yourself to execute something? Or are you doing it for the grant application? So you could go very detailed for yourself and then you would maybe take like the, the larger parts of, of the components for our application. Are you following here? Yeah. All right, um, moving over to the budget plan. So all applications usually ask for, you know, what, what things are gonna cost and how much money you are asking for from the grant, etc. cetera. Um, and these are things that we can plan. Um, so where do you start on creating a budget plan? Uh, you look at the components on your to-do list or your project plan, what needs to be done, and then you just kind of try and put a price tag on each component of the plan, um, whether it's like salary costs for, for this person doing this, or if it's rental of this venue, or if it's, you know, what, whatever each item is, you just try and put a fair price tag on that to give you an example of how much it is going to cost. And then this is just a plan. It doesn't have to be perfect. It's just an estimate. Just like put a number that you think it's going to be. And in most cases, it it probably will change. Like these plans, they, they never go <laughs> as planned usually. Um, where does the revenue come? I added this one in there because it makes sense for a few of the projects, for example, the ones that I was mentioning earlier is and like a software solution, etc. But this is not apply to everything. And this is not what's asked for in uh, grant applications. I just kept it in there because for some projects, this is something that uh, makes sense. Um, and then uh, for those projects, the question is like, are revenues higher than the costs or which one is higher? And 
And how do you foresee if this is a business plan for some years? How do you foresee that change happening, or or do you see this as being a, a sustainable business model in some way? I have a question over there in the back. Thank you. So um, when applying for cultural grants uh, for cultural pro projects, you're often applying as an artist. Mm -hmm. uh, would you uh, calculate your own wages into the budget plan? And would you uh, assume that the grant is covering that or is the grant not covering that? And maybe in particular, is uh, wages for the artists themselves something that you can apply for in Tullus Church? Mm -hmm. Um, so this really differs between types of grants, but since we are talking about the music fund, I'm going to give this one to Anna. Yes, yeah, you can apply for salary costs for yourself and other artists in general. Yep. Mm -hmm. You're welcome. Mm -hmm. All right. Follow up question in the front. Um, yeah, a follow up uh, to wages. How do you uh, determine what wages to pay? Who do you mm -hmm. take the uh, uh, union uh, mm -hmm. rates, or, or you know, how do you find that number? Yeah, is it your friend that said I'll do it for ten thousand, or mm -hmm. you know, if you want a violinist? Yeah. How does that work? Uh, very good question and very valid. It, this is usually a very or like the toughest part to kind of uh, maneuver but uh, usually if it's something that I don't have any feeling for or if it's something that I haven't been hiring yeah. someone for a project and I have like no feeling you can go to the wages lists and the, the like the minimum wages on on like Waffer and and the equivalent um, but but yeah in in this case and the music grant and within the music industry I do you, Anna. Do you have anything to add to that? It's honestly yeah, we do recommend just uh, just being honest with your costs and we to use some uh, tax the scale, mm -hmm. like they're out there, you know, yeah. FEI or something similar. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And there was one question over there, and then a question in the front. So you, yeah. Well, just like um, she kind of answered that. Oh, yeah. Did I answer? Yeah. Uh, you can you kind of answered it with the uh, with the wages yeah. uh, because like Afi Hao has like a list over wages. Like if mm -hmm. you're recording an album, yeah. uh, you can choose if it's hourly rates or if it's going to be rates uh, for every song, mm -hmm. but that does not cover the cost of practices. Like having practices before the recording session. There mm -hmm. there's a different category for that also at Afi Hao. Mm -hmm. So if you're doing like a musical like an album or stuff then like uh, personally i would recommend just going to effie how and check on the rates that they have there okay perfect thank you and follow up question in the front for the rugby Vietnam album <laughs> <laughs> no here oh, sorry um i hope there are other musicians asking themselves this or maybe i'm the only one but um regarding the types of grants mm -hmm. let's say i'm a musician and i want to apply for a grant that is directed at uh the promotion of the album let's say i already have recorded the album mm -hmm. and i'm gonna focus now on the content of that album the audiovisual content of the album is it videos photos whatever mm -hmm. would that fall under the category of the music fund or the marketing fund? Yeah, Anna, yeah. Yeah, that would be the music grant. Yeah. So within the music grant in the music fund, uh, you can apply for a composition, making music, recording it, uh, having it mixed, etc., and also the marketing for it. Okay. So you can apply for it. If you go into the forum, uh, that's one of the things you can apply for, basically for the, you know, the release of the album and what and that uh, included in that is the marketing aspect of it. And you should specify that at the beginning of the grant. Yes, that's oh, yeah. 
you you would choose that like where you choose what you're applying for and that would have to also be like you have to show that in the application like with the cost what you're yeah. applying for yeah but mm -hmm. well, that would be the music grant can you say what is the question oh yes he was asking if uh if he's making an album and he wants to uh apply for money for grant for the kind of visuals or marketing aspect of the album for releasing it where would that fall mm -hmm. into which type of grant and that's the uh, music grant okay perfect we have three more questions here we are over here then we're there and then over there so to follow up on the question, how many applications can we have? For example, there's one that could be recording and another for specifically marketing. Can we apply for both? Uh, in this case, that would be the same application because within Tonlisa Stirko, like the music grant, uh, it can be both recording and uh, the marketing of the album, releasing it. That's within the same one. But you can apply for, I mean, technically you can apply for as many grants as you have. But obviously it would have to be like specific different projects. Mm -hmm. So yeah, you can't be a musician. You're applying for the business grant for a music festival that you're doing. And you can also be applying for an album that you're working on. And also be applying for the uh, performance grant for touring the album in Iceland. So mm -hmm. yeah, it can be a, it can be a lot. Mm -hmm. Then there's a question over there. Oh, okay. That was the same question. And then one question back there, orange shirt. Um, so there's a lot, a big uh, part of doing what we're doing is spending time in front of the computer, uh -huh. doing applications or, or uh, answering emails or sending emails. Uh, so we can count the hours, but could you put a... Uh, uh, our rate on that work when we're doing the budget like because i i've never worked in an office so um, i don't know how much how yeah. much to i mean it differs between what you're doing um and what type of grants these are and instead of categorizing a computer work so... i would categorize it as to what you might be working on at each time. For example, a lot of this would be prepping of maybe promotional material. If you're writing some texts that are going to be used, um, then that could be the equivalent of the marketing campaign planning period. But um, if the question is like, could you put an hourly rate on writing the grant application? I would say probably no. Um, but event, yeah. Yeah, and then a lot of that would be, uh, I would say, like production. I think you would have to categorize it if it's production, so bookings. Yeah. yeah. Oh yeah, in the mic. Oh yeah. Can you repeat that, please? Yeah. Yeah, I'm just <laughs> asking you to give us a. a N a number of kroners per hour for for oh, like yeah. all this i don't know like if there is i don't know what if are, there what, is an hour what's your rate, rate. Huh. what is your rate or do we, uh, that depends like it it depends on my, i've taken hourly rate everything from 10000 to like 35000 it depends on what i'm doing and which like part of my specialty i would be doing so 10000 is all right Per hour, I would. I I honestly can't say, but it de depends. Like what I you are putting it in also, for. I'm sorry, it depends on if you're like a freelancer, contractor, or if you're working for a company. So it's it's hard to put that number down. But so there's a re uh, follow up question. But maybe we could do a discussion later <laughs> where everyone could pitch in their number, <laughs> and we can all kind of try to figure out. Maybe a quick one, because uh, for the grant application itself, and if, if you start to add all of those things in and you put a 10 or 20,000 per hour on, on everything, uh, are we shooting ourselves in the foot if the number gets too high in the application and you're filtering it out completely? You say, oh, this is too expensive. Or do you, you know, or do you take, okay, he's getting one fourth of this 
and thus we should put higher hourly rates because we want or so, you know be, i i know you said we have to be yeah. very honest with what we and honestly we're giving a lot of our work so should we be honest about that as well or yeah i think a, okay if yeah. i can just take this one in general and then i'll let anna answer for the music rant usually when you're applying for a grant there is a specific amount that you're applying for um okay and then in the description of the grant it specified mm -hmm. what the grant can be can be applied for um so you have that number if if you start putting like hourly rates and you're going maximum way above the grant that you're asking for you know you wouldn't you wouldn't get more than the grant can give um but i wouldn't say like it depends if you're a little bit over that budget i don't think it would take your application and and throw it away but it's more of just if there is a specific amount of money that you are applying for i wouldn't apply for more than that amount so if you see that one component has maxed out the whole amount of the grant then you might want to lower that one if you're gonna have more components but anna if you have any addition to that no, I mean, yeah, I think you covered it really well. And what we we encourage the uh, the grant committees to give uh, fewer grants and more money. So they're not, you know, I don't know how to put this in English. So basically, so they're not, you know, because you're not doing anyone a favor if they get only a tiny percent of what they're asking for. Mm -hmm. And we all, that's why we also encourage the applicants to be honest and not shoot you know, way over the limit in the hopes of getting 10% of what they ask for. So it mm -hmm. kind of works both ways. Yeah, so it's always better to be realistic in that sense. Um, so I'm thinking, I can feel that people are in the mood for a lot of questions and I'm being mindful of the people that are online. I am thinking if I should, because there's just a small part left of the presentation and then we're going to do a big Q&A for like all kinds of questions. So... Is it okay if I just move on, finish that, and you hold on to the thought? Because I love, I love the question vibe that we're getting into, but it's a bit premature for the lecture, and I don't want to hold everyone online. Okay, let's let's finish it. We, we so we were within like budget planning. Um, this slide I basically kept in there as uh, for you just for your notes for future reference and you're going to keep these slides so when you are thinking about doing a budget and basically for a project which is i could have only written budget for a project but as i can hear from the questions in here this is like a a heated thing and people think about these like costs and budgets a lot so i also included what i have in like my other budgeting and pricing seminars um on how i create broad you know budget for a specific product or uh or a business and like how how to plan that out so i just have a few comments on this slide on that but um i'm not gonna you know go through each and every one it's just like you know for the project i wrote exactly what we've been talking about today where you put a price tag on each component of your project plan um, and usually the starting cost, if you're doing several projects, you're doing a music festival and a plan for a few years, the first one is usually going to cost way much more than the ones in the years that come after that. So it's all these like basic uh, do's and don'ts. Um, and then revenues, I also kept this one in from like another seminar because I knew when going through the list of attendees today both in person and online that some people are creating pro projects that are for revenue um, so this slide would be helpful for that whether it's a service or a product a software product so that's also like a, 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 some good tips of, of planning for that um, but yeah, when you when you have like for a service, for example, a service would be like a music festival, then you can like estimate the amount of guests that you are welcoming each year. And if you're selling tickets to your music festival, you would estimate that revenue part. Um, and then like how to do pricing of your ticket sales, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, but I'm not going to go deeper into that because it's only for like a specific group of people 
uh, applying for the grant, but you're welcome to ask later in the Q&A. Uh, also this one on the revenue model, or basically like if you're selling tickets or there are users using your platform or you are, you, you know, you have a, a service helping bands go on tour, etc. Like how are you supposed to charge for the service that you have? Um, you're basically talking about like, where does the money come from? Like who is paying you? Where do you get the money if you're creating some sort of revenue? Is it from one source or more sources? For example, we at Iceland Innovation Week with our festival, we have several sources of income. It's not only the ticket sales, but we thought of other sources to get in money around the business. Um, but when people look at it cold, it looks like there's only one source, but there are several others that are kind of hidden. So there's all kinds of tips and tricks to, to navigate stuff like this. Um, and then it's different if it's a product based source of income or if it's like a sustainable business model, which means you're running a business with some sort of service, for example, for touring bands um, for, you know, for a three year period, something like this. Or if it's just like one project where where, you know, you're recording this album or stuff like this. OK, then we are moving into our like uh, I'm going to skip the discussions about this one and I'm going to go straight through the marketing as well. And then we're going to do a big Q&A just so we are on time. Um, on the marketing and PR, it's good to think about first, like who who is your customer? Who are the users? Who's going to be listening to this? Who's going to be attending this? Who's going to be using this service, etc.? And what outlets can you use to reach those people? And to those people, and that really differs between what you are doing. Um, and I think these these are all a given. But the thing is, like, what channels do you use? Because the question usually should be like, what not to use? Because it's never best to be in all channels. It's best to like select one main channel that you do very well on how to reach people rather than trying to be everywhere and sending messages all over. So that's like the biggest takeaway on, on platforms like these. There is social media, which is now all kinds of platforms. Will you have a website? Will you be using SEO to kind of, and SEO means like if someone Googles a keyword that's connected to what you do, if you appear at the top on Google, etc. All kinds of things like this. If it's newspapers, TV, radio, going on podcasts or creating your own podcast, word of mouth, hosting events to gain attention, etc. So all kinds of things uh, in there to reach them. Um, and then do you have the necessary budget to use these outlets? I mean, some of these outlets are much, much, much more pricier than others. Whereas uh, some of them, like social media, you can hack your way through them without spending like one krona. Um, are the outlets worth it? And this is also a question that, for example, we in our company ask ourselves a lot. Uh, are we supposed to be present on, you know, is, on Facebook and Instagram and TikTok and this? Because if you go on a new channel and there's nothing on it, I think probably all of us have been looking up a company and it has a Facebook page and the post is maybe from 2007, the last one. And you're like, oh, is this still running or, or what. So it is a lot of work if you choose to be on specific channels. Um, so when you're creating the marketing plan, I would rather say just be concise and select which channels you're going to use and how you're going to market uh, your project. Um, brand guide, I also you know, had that one in there because it's nice if you have like a cohesive look in the messaging that you are sending out. And this is very different from types of projects that are applying for grants. Um, but it's always, you know, a good rule of thumb if you're, for example, going to do a PDF with your grant application um, to select some two colors that you are using or a specific font. It's worse if you have like three to ten types of fonts happening in, in one document or something like this. So just uh, some thoughts on that. And then to finalize, um, 
like writing a grant application is usually just a lot of small steps. Um, and I like to remind people to like break down the components of an application into these smaller things and projects that you have to do and write up instead of approaching it as like, oh, there's this huge monster of an application that I have to tackle. So, you know, basically the the small steps is what work what gets you there and, and all of a sudden you've made the whole whole process. So now we can move into a full QA and questions and discussions. Yo, yeah, I'm just uh, have a follow up question to the budgeting yes. and the salaries. Yeah. So um is it better to um apply things that are in kind, something that is not being uh, paid for, but mm -hmm. it does cost something usually. Mm -hmm. Does it strengthen the application to have things like that in kind? And as, uh, especially if people are uh, accepting uh, artist salary at the same time, should they count that into to something that they provide into as in kind? I would always specify all in kind contributions to a project within it, especially going back to earlier when we were talking about participants in a project or, or people that are working with the project. Um, I would always specify them, but it depends on like in-kind contributions. It can be various things if, you know, an in-kind contribution could, for example, be like me reading over your grant application for free. I wouldn't put yeah, yeah. that in there, but if you select the ones that really matter, for example, you know, you have connections with someone who works at an advertising agency and they, you know, are going to create the marketing plan for you for free. I would definitely put that in there and, you know, it, that would strengthen. Yeah. And artist salary should also, because, you know, sometimes people just like, yeah, yeah, I'm on artist salary. So I yeah. just, so the, the work that the, you know, composer, for example, yeah. does all of a sudden doesn't appear there. Mm. Yeah. So, so would you recommend just to keep it like this is the time I'm spending on it, but it is in kind because it's funded from somewhere else. Yeah, I mean, I would specify it in the, yeah, in the project, but you wouldn't, for example, in the format of this music application, you wouldn't have to put it in the budget plan, but I would yeah. put it in the project plan. But I'll let Anna say if, if, if she... And yeah. I think it would strengthen the application. Yeah. So the question is, I can repeat the question. Okay. <laughs> she asks, wouldn't you put it in the budget since it is a part and uh, it is a contribution? Okay. Yes, you would put it in the budget. But in this application form, you would probably have to put a number in there. You could put the number zero, I think. For the people that are going to be reading over it, they would get it either way. But I think you could also specify it in the text. So we're not saying that it that it isn't worth anything, that you don't include it in the actual like budget fill-in thing in the application. But I would have it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. If it has a number, it does. But she was talking about in-kind contributions that have the number zero. Yeah, but all contributions that have a number, you definitely include, yeah. Yes, over here and then in the back. Thank you for the presentation. Great uh, tips and tricks. <laughs> um, and uh, I wanted to ask, uh, do you have any tips and tricks on how to deal with the tax system related to grant allocation? and how to successfully document the costs of the project or business. Mm -hmm. Okay, I could host you. <laughs> I could host like a long workshop on this and I actually love talking about this and I have a lot of tips and tricks. But um in short, um I would it de it really depends on what you're doing and especially like in the tax system whereas like some things are undanthead is like 
exempt tax uh, up to a certain amount, for example, like two million are exempt, but then it differs if you're a person or if you're an entity and you founded uh, a company. Um, so yeah, the question, there's like hundreds of answers to the question. Um, I have a lot of tips and tricks, but it really differs on, on what you're doing. So if you want to ask me like more specific also after the event, or mm. if someone wants to, I could answer, but it's hard to give like a overall thing. But if I have one tip, it's just, you know, do your taxes correctly. Mm. <laughs> so yeah, so it's all legal. <laughs> That's my tip. <laughs> yeah. Can I add something? Uh, yeah. Sorry. Uh, yeah. Uh, thanks. Uh, yeah. That's a, a bulky uh, yeah. discussion, I think. Yeah. Uh, but uh, can I ask the SM music? Uh, maybe uh, if we could have some kind of uh, a workshop or uh, something similar. Uh, because many artists, of course, uh, they would ask for travel grant, for tours and so on. And I've heard of uh, some that have uh, uh, incurred in uh, some uh, fines uh, because they didn't, uh, from mm -hmm. the tax system, because they didn't know exactly how to deal with this like kind of income and how to document that, uh, especially like uh, independent musicians who are mainly focusing on the music and cannot really like do not have the support of the booking agency or like tour management mm -hmm. system so you know mainly for these smaller uh kind of uh like uh entities i think that's a uh excellent suggestion and i'll definitely take that on board and we are planning more like educational events throughout the year so mm -hmm. i think that should definitely be in there thank mm -hmm. you yes um, so back there in the red, and then over there. Thank you. I wanted to ask if you are applying for the recording grant, for example, in the fall. Like, is there any date that we are except, like expected to complete the project? Let's say the album is like planned to release in spring 2026. Is this date too far away and we should rather like wait for spring or mm -hmm. yeah, when it's the right time? Me? Yeah. Yeah. The, uh, the rules of the music fund state that the project can begin within 18 months from when you receive the grant. So, for example, you it could, yeah, in this case, it could be in the spring of, of 26, because the start date for this next uh, funding is the uh, January 25. So, yeah, so we are trying to encourage people to apply and kind of think more in advance when it comes to the grant applications. Sorry, did you say the end date can be 18 months after? Yeah, no, no, it can start within 18 months after you receive the application. Okay, and then over there. Uh, mm -hmm. Because there have been a lot of questions about tax and stuff like that. I yeah. am a independent contractor, have been for three years. Mm -hmm. So I can give like a bit of tips about that. Mm -hmm. So basically, if you have your salary in the in the application, always make sure that you uh, think about that the tax is around 36 percent or something. Yeah. So think about the money that you want to get for the salary and then uh, add 36 percent of that. And that would go for the taxes. Mm -hmm. If you... Um, so basically, the VAT or Virusökaskattur, if you earn over two million uh, per uh, year in independent salary, that means that you have to get a number and then that ticks in. Mm -hmm. But if you are earning uh, less than two million in independent, then you don't have to think about that. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of a, like a crash course. So always think yeah. about having extra things and to pay that at the end of every, like when you have to fill in your tax form, mm -hmm. have like a special bank account in your bank where you put all that money that's supposed to go into the tax. So mm -hmm. it's already there. So yeah. just some tips. Yeah. And note that this 2 million thing only applies to individuals not company yeah yeah uh so a lot of like album 
like making an album that's like cultural thing. Mm -hmm. If it's like if you're playing at a live venue, then you probably have to pay the VAT. But if it's a cultural mm -hmm. thing, then sometimes you don't even have to think about it. So yeah. Mm -hmm. Over here, uh, I'm thinking about tonelistar uh, yeah. Can you like, if you've already applied for the uh, the like recording part of it, uh, can you then later apply for the utgave part, the like release part? Mm -hmm. Yes, yes, you can, as long as you didn't receive a grant for the cost for the release part before, then you can do that. And then I would just be very clear on what part it is that you're applying for now and how that's different from what you received the grant on before. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, are there any questions online? Just let me know if there's anything that comes in there. If not, uh, in the back over there. Uh, so this might be a like very specific question uh, but it has to do with like uh, how you can apply so like in my case uh, I'm working at Hallgrimskirkja and one of our roles is as a concert venue uh, and we are doing an application for like a long term uh, so a, like a three year grant and that includes like a lot of projects I think we have like 40 concerts a year, but like not all our projects, all our concerts are like big. Some have uh, some like extra costs and some are like really large. When you're doing like applying for this long-term application, can you also make like a project application on the side for larger projects or is it just like canceling each other out or... <laughs> I wouldn't necessarily uh, yeah, recommend that. Again, I think the lines will have to be really clear. Like what what's part of the long term contract that you're applying for and what's part of the project. There's nothing against it. You can do it. But I would always think what's what's most likely to be successful. Mm -hmm. Okay, and over there in the back, and then here in the front. Hey, um, do you guys have any tips, more tips for the pitch part of it? Because personally, I find the project planning and budgeting relatively easy. Yeah. Because it's just filling in the blanks in mm -hmm. a sense. But the pitch, it's like, it's mm -hmm. either too humble or too grandiose and cringy. <laughs> you know, I don't know. It's hard to find the middle ground. Yeah. Um, very good question. Um, on the pitch, I would say try and nail the components of the list mm -hmm. that I listed up as like what the application needs to have and like what a business plan has. But then it also is like how can you capture this like value proposition and this uniqueness that you have. Um, and a, a very strong part of the pitch is always the people behind the project and and the why. And basically like why are you why are you doing this? And to make the person that is reading over these grant applications understand that and and kind of sell them with you. Um, I would say too grandiose of a pitch. Can you of, often be off-putting, but uh, then again, I would always also say like own what you're doing and and don't make the project sound like smaller or 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 less than it actually is. Like try and sell it, of course, but it is a very fine line and it it differs also between projects. Is there anything specific that you had in mind or? Yeah, you're, you're putting on concerts. Saying, well, you're also true. Yeah. Should, yeah, I'm repeating what you're saying. Should you say that you are awesome, which is true or not? <laughs> Some level it is, right? But uh, yeah. writing about yourself is also 
Writing about yourself, yeah, it is awkward and it's tough, especially like, yeah, when you're trying to sell something and, and get a grant, it's it's tough to sit down and, and start talking about how awesome you are. Mm -hmm. But um, in this part, I I usually always, you know, try and get help from people around me and from people that are looking at the project from outside and hear like, pitch them the idea, like how you describe it, just talking, not writing, and ask them like, how how would you, how would you put this for, idea forward? Like, what is your key takeaways from this? What do you find most interesting? Or like, and what, what do you think? I don't even have to include there because it's it's a given. So um, I I really like asking people around me and that's usually my first advice when I have people in like business coaching is like talk to the people around you if you have an idea. Don't be, I mean, of course, if you're doing something where you're going to apply for like um, Enkeleve or like, um, yeah, patent or something, then don't talk about it. But in most cases, talk about it, at least to your friends and get some feedback um, because it, it will only make the idea bigger and, and, and greater. And the possibility that someone is actually doing this and this is not like the, the first time in the world someone does this. Um, and I would definitely recommend that. And also when you're doing something that you know someone else is doing similar, I... I usually like, you know, reaching out and just saying, hey, okay, I'm going to do a similar thing. Can you, can you help me? How did you approach this when you started? So, uh, yeah, I recommend that. Okay, another question over there. Yeah, uh, regarding the application form. So... <laughs> Does it persist? Like you open it one evening and you do some things in it, and but you're not finishing it. Mm -hmm. Like, or are you approaching it like you can open it again? And like, does it persist and save yes. without being submitted? Yes, it does save, but I, I never recommend working on an application in the application form because the running system has crashed especially on the last day and the last hour when everyone is handing it in. Um, I always write grant applications on like Google Drive or a similar thing, like that's an online thing. If your computer or laptop like, you know, just gives up or, or the system crashes, then I would always say don't like write it from start into the application form itself. But it does save. Yeah. Maybe one other thing like, do you guys have a list of like a calendar or brief like of grants that are out there like like uh, do you mean in general or within the music industry uh, within the music for example then i'll give this one to anna yeah there was a list uh, that tonverka missed uh which i do not remember right now what's called in english had a very good list online i'll just google it actually to see if it's still up and that's one of the of the projects that we're doing here is to combine an extensive list of of relevant grants that musicians artists can apply for so i'll google it and maybe i can just put it in the chat as well yeah um before how are we on time what time is it it's 20 minutes two. okay so let's do three more questions and then just We'll, we'll go and chat together. So over there, over here, and over here. Yeah, I have a very general question. Yeah. Uh, as a application committee reads applications and they decide this is a sure thing, we won't even need to read it again because it's such a great application. What is it? <laughs> What's the magic? What's the application? And don't say, you, it could even be by somebody you don't even know, but the application is so good that you just decide to grab it. What's the magic? <laughs> Anna, <laughs> I don't, I don't. Uh, there's, there's what no are you looking for? <laughs> <laughs> well, I would look at the, you know, um, oh, that's oof, tough question. <laughs> I mean, it's basically what you have in the description. Yes, of it's course. what you have in the description. And it's like 40% is the project itself. 
twenty percent is the people that are involved in it, and then twenty. Am I doing the calculate? Forty uh, percent is uh, the budget and the timeline and and so on. Um, the committee has yeah the grant committees use these things to give it an evaluation to give it a grade so to speak. But then we also ask the committees to kind of go over again and use what we call like an APC system. So, I mean, and there's maybe where, where, where magic comes in is that like, uh, so we asked to like, are we kind of catering to old genres of music? Is this something, is this project something new that's really missing on the market? So even if the application isn't very strong or, you know, perfectly done, then these things might kind of give them an oomph mm -hmm. to, uh, yeah, to get a better overall grade. Mm -hmm. So we, uh, yeah, like I said, that's, uh, <laughs> you have to tick a lot of boxes, but we, uh, we try to get, oh, not we, because we, we don't have anything to do with it personally here at Iceland Music, but the grant committees are kind of, we ask them to really think these through, uh, mm -hmm. think these through and not just evaluate it based on how well the application is, mm -hmm. you know, it's also other factors that matters. Is that helpful mm -hmm. in any way? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Okay. And then over here. I'm organizing um, concert series with five concerts mm -hmm. in the countryside and first one in February, last one in December. And I can have the concert dates, that's easy. But does it weaken my application if I don't have the artists on my application? I'll give this one to Anna. Uh, I would say, yes, it might weaken it a little bit. Mm -hmm. uh, I would try to put in what is confirmed or who you're speaking to, mm -hmm. even who you have in mind, mm -hmm. something like that strengthens it. Mm -hmm. Instead of just having a date, and yeah, you, that you show that you're, you know, it's in process. Okay. But I can't hire people if I don't know what money I have. Yeah, that's a yeah. Yeah, I know that's an actual uh, excellent point. It's a cat's twenty-two. Yeah, yeah. but uh, the honest yeah. answer is, is strength is it like or like or if we do get this grant, they will perform. Yeah. I mean, mm -hmm. you know, it's a caveat yeah. in there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And a good thing also uh, for these types of things are getting what you call like a villity or a letter of intent uh, mm -hmm. from someone where you're not promising them that you're going to book mm -hmm. them and pay the salary. And you say that mm -hmm. this booking is contingent on the grant. Um, could I book you if, if we get mm -hmm. the grant? And then you can actually say that they are, you know, confirmed mm -hmm. contingent on on the grant yeah exactly um so i would always recommend like reaching out and and then as well even though you haven't gotten confirmation for everyone to list up uh, who yeah. you're going to approach as well okay last question over here in the corner i'm gonna give you the mic i was just wondering if you had an example of uh, attached materials uh because uh if I got you correctly, that is the application, more or less, from... Uh, yeah, okay. I, I wouldn't say that that is the application, but I did mention that it that it really matters on selling the idea and showing something extra, because it kind of gives you another arena to show what you're doing and what you're planning outside of the scope of this, you know, application form, because... Uh, usually when you're doing grants and this, uh, you know, this is for music fund or, or any grant system, you have to have a pretty formalized application form so you can, you know, do uh, some good criteria and be very, you know, organized in going over everything. But I would say that the attachments are kind of like the area where you can show your extra value or, or like the, spe the special thing about your project. Um, so, so I really agree on, I'm not saying that you should attach a bunch of documents just because, but it's more like, <clears throat> uh, 
it's different like if you if you have been doing like a series of concerts uh, and you have some photo material from pe previous concerts and you have some material about about that concept you could attach something like this or you could create like a pdf uh, pitch document like where you're EPK, talking sorry example, like like an epk for example epk what's that electronic yes electronic press kit exactly uh, all this helps if you have any visual content that always helps um, i'm not saying that you know you should write a longer text about the project than actually fits in the project box that's not helping anyone it's more like if there are any attachments if you have any further info about budget or about the team if you have like a, a bio or previous project that this person has executed that is applying for the grant etc so I mean, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna say just something in in the name of music yes. fund, well, but yeah, I I agree. Just to add to this, uh, I think it also depends on the context. Uh, what what grant you're applying for? Mm -hmm. For example, if you're applying for the music grant, Tolles is good. It would make uh, great sense to send some demos as attachment, you know, for the music. If you're applying for the marketing grant, if you're, you know, that's for if you're going abroad and you're applying, for example, for a grant to pay for uh, like PR services and so on for a tour that you're doing abroad, then it would make sense to put as an attachment the uh, basically the agreement from the PR office that you're working with. So, yeah, I just wanted to add that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right, so now we have concluded this uh, Q&A session, but we have about 10 or 15 minutes, yeah, 10 minutes left where we can uh, stick around and have some chats. You can ask us uh, some more, but I just want to take the opportunity to thank you for coming here today. I hope that it was useful. And I guess Anna also wants to uh, say some final words. Um, yeah, so, I mean, first of all, thank you so much. This has been incredibly helpful. Uh, when uh, Etta told me she was going to have a, a slide about a business plan, I was a bit like, oh, my God, no, no. <laughs> so uh, we're not expecting people to do a business plan. But then she explained to me how much sense it makes just to kind of find the essence of the project that you're doing and how it can apply to everything else that you're doing and just, you know, for the uh, application format. Um, and I just want to remind people that we have like most of the information about the music fund on our website, which is the mister.is, icelandmusic.is, under uh, music fund. And again, if you have any questions, just you know, reach out. You can you can call at office time. You can call and ask for me, or send me an email. Ask for a meeting. So yeah, we're here to help. All right. Thank you. Okay.